What's going on guys? We're going to go over Mark Marley's tactics. Now he apparently has gone unbeaten 120 and 0 in his weekend league on his main account and 20 and 0 in his past on his Celtic RTG. It's 4-3-2-1. We're going to go over his tactics right now and then what we'll do is we're going to play a game with him and then give you my twists at the end for the average player. For players like yourself, I can copy them because don't forget Mark Marley is a pro player. It may not work for you as it is. Okay, so here are the tactics, Mark Marley's tactics. He's got the balanced defensive style. He's got a width on 45. Don't forget, this is a 4-3-2-1, so 45 is quite a natural width. The depth is a bit higher on 60. Depth of 60 is quite high. Um, normally, you want to be a bit, bit more higher on the pitch. It's quite aggressive, not towards the 70-71, but it's still pretty high compared to a more neutral formation, so it's definitely an attacking formation. Balanced build-up play. Direct passing, 45 width as well, attacking width, which is quite neutral. And he's got a lot of players inside the box, seven players inside the box. Now, going over to the instructor, this is where things get a bit funky. This actually defends in a 4-4-2. So what he does is he has um, the, well, Alvarez, basically. Alvarez becomes a right mid and then Sun becomes basically um, a left mid. And then Tonali, and then, so I'm going to change the positions around in a second. And then you have Neymar and um, your strikers up front. So that is how it defends, basically. I'm just going to make this a bit easier for you so you can see. Hopefully that makes it a bit easier. So it's got the strike on stay central, get it behind. The right forward, stay central, get it behind as well. The left forward, which kind of comes back as a left mid, stay central, get it behind, come back in defense. We're playing as a left mid defensively. Attackingly, we're playing as a left forward. Um, now, these are the centre mids. They're all three centre mids, or both the, both of these two centre mids, on stay back while attacking. The middle one's on balance. The left centre mids on stay on the edge of the box for cross. Both of them on cover centre. The right centre mid is on cover wing, balanced, stay on the edge of the box. The right back's on stay back, but the left back is on balanced overlap. So this is the left back that will be basically be going forward. So you'll be defending in a 4-4-2. But when you're attacking, you'll be attacking in a 4-3-2-1 with the left back creating those runs down the wing to give you width and to give you a chance side of the box. What's important though is these two positions over here is that you have centre mids in these positions. But he's going to make some changes and I'll come back to the screen now. So what we've done is we put the striker um, on stay central get it behind. We put Sun as the second striker on stay central and get it behind. Now Neymar makes the left mid. He's on stay central get it behind, but he comes back to make the left mid when you're defending in a 4-4-2. Um, the reason I put Neymar there is because I personally feel he links pretty well with Davies and um, I think it works pretty well together. What I've done is Lorente and Tonali, they're both the centre mids in the in the 4-4-2. They're the middle players. Neymar's here. You have Lorente and Tonali. And then Alvarez is basically makes the right mid, therefore he's on cover wing. So Tonali Lorente will be Lorente here, Tonali will be there. Alvarez will be the right the right mid, and Neymar will be the left mid. So that's how you make that kind of four players in the middle. And then you have Davies, the player that's on overlap. That's why I put Kika, put her on right back because she's a step back while attacking player. Now let's go into the game and let's see how these tactics play out. Okay, so now we're going to go straight into the game. You can see here we've got the 4-3-2-1 in our attacking slot. So we're going to have to change to an attacking to the attacking formation inside the game using the D-pad tactics. One thing to mention with this formation is, um, this is very, very similar to my 4-3-2-1 if you use my 4-3-2-1. The only thing I would say, the difference I would say, it's more on the opposite end and then the player instructions in midfield. So we're going to go straight to a 4-3-2-1. And the key thing is using Neymar as left. But don't forget, when you change formation in game, it does take some time to change. So just do better, bear that in mind. Going to get the ball with Neymar down the wing. And if you want to force a train change, what you can do is kick the ball out of play or you can try to get a set piece. I'll show you what I mean. So you can see here, it's not even changed yet. So I'm just going to wait, defend this normally. It might change now. It might take a few seconds or so. Get the ball back here. So you can see now it's somewhat changed. We've got Neymar, we've got David on the left-hand side. So here we're going to use Neymar. So you can see that's Alvarez. So Alvarez is the right centre mid. That's Kika. Now you can see Davies is the key player here. You see Davies on just on the radar. Now we're going to lob the ball here to Davies here like so. And the reason Davies got quick step, beautiful. And the reason to put Neymar there is because Neymar's got a good agility and balance. And so Neymar can dribble the ball. And that can link up well with Davies. And we get the ball there. We get the ball to Huang. Um, and unfortunately, just able to miss the chance over there. That's the earlier tackle we made. Going for the corner here. 
getting outside the box. And you know what? Here, we're just because we need to get the objective and we need to get the goal, we ended up going with a power shot. And unfortunately, we completely utterly missed there. So you can see when we're defending over here, um, it's not actually going in a 4-4-2 shape. It could be due to work rates as well. You might, you might, that's why I always try to put comeback and offense on one of those players, because it could be also due to work rates why that player is not coming back on offense. So do bear that in mind. Um, it could be a work rate dependent formation. That's why it's important to make these videos. Um, because of course pros know all of this, but does but you might not know this. So here's gonna defend a situation over here. You see we're defending in a 4-4-2. Bad defending from me there, I would say. I probably should have just defended that a bit better. I don't know what I was really doing there. That was really bad defending from myself there. Now it's probably gonna go use Davies down the wing. Get the foul. Make the pass in the middle. You can see that chance there with Sun. Get that pass there. And we ended up, and don't forget, I am actually, I just realized I'm actually on precision shooting. So you're going to see a bit of pre precision shooting as well at play over here. I'm kind of considering changing precision shooting. I'm not sure yet, but you can score goals like um, from these odd angles, which you couldn't otherwise score with assisted. And because assisted is so bad, it just really helps out. Using a left in the mid set, being aggressive. Then you can see that's Neymar waiting for Davies, waiting for that overlap. And you can see now I got the overlap. Now, if I want to be a cut, cut in merchant, which I'm so, sure many of you guys are, you can use that. You can use Neymar on the edge of the box. You can use just waiting, 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 waiting. I can bring the ball back to Davies here. And I can run into the space and I can go for the cutback. And I tried to go for the shot there, but it wasn't really the best. I have to always remember that on this account, I am on precision shooting. So you kind of get a bit of both, but also using his tactic. But if any situations we do miss, of course, that is 100% due to my gameplay and my lack of precision shooting experience. Get the ball with Kika. You can see that's us defending in at 4 4 2. You can see Sun over there. Waiting for Tonari to make that run. I'm just going to cut it back just over there. And then we're going to go here with the shot. Good defending from my opponent. We should have probably have scored that. I spent just some time there defending. You can see one of the, the immediate issues that I find with this formation is that the lack of CDM. So if you struggle defensively, this may be a bit of an issue for you. It's going to run back here, get the ball back. You see a lot of manual positioning needs to be made here. Don't forget, when a pro players use this formation, they know exactly when and where to move their players. You can see we lost the ball there. Able to run back. That is why the pace is so important. An L1 trigger there, waiting for the, that's the right center mid, Alvarez. Wang. Yes, we get the goal. Beautiful goal that was. Um, doing objective, um, doing objective card, Huang He Chan. Um, not too far away now. Uh, still some way to go, but hopefully he will get the upgrade very, very soon. Um, put us off in a good attacking position there. You can see just more bit more patient waiting with L1 triggers. You're going to have to use a lot more L1 triggers, especially in a build-up play. You can see here we're defending in a 4-4-2. You can see Lorente. Neymar's now made that, that position on the left-hand side. So you're pushing Davies forward here. Now you can see on the radar, we're looking at the right centre mid. We're just kind of baiting. What my opponent kind of bait for that position there. Just waiting a little bit. Now you can see Davies is free, but we can also attack on the right-hand side. Get the ball over there. Do a 1-2. And you can see we're still attacking on the right hand side and we can basically create the overlap in the middle. And here we're going to go with a chance with Neymar. Should have probably scored that again. That's more precision shooting. Going to go with Huang and a beautiful goal there. Got a bit lucky with the rebound. My opponent just kind of panicked in that situation when they were defending. Shouldn't really have panicked here. Going to keep it in check again. We've got the 1-2. We've got Neymar. We're going to push Lorente forward a bit here tonight. Just a little bit forward. He's going to be that player on stay back while attacking. You see, these are the centre mids. On they're basically staying back. Get the ball back with Tonali. Beautiful. Waiting for the overlap. Timing is the most important thing. I believe that's offside. Just about. Knee tried to getting it down the wing over there. I do like the movement in this formation. Um, I actually prefer the left back. I would say the more. Oh, big mistake for me there. Something that you should not be doing. I'm gonna run back here. But it's important to show you these mistakes in his gameplay because. What I've realized over time is when I never used to show you mistakes in my gameplay, I used to make perfect examples. I realized it's not the best way to teach because you need to learn how to recover. You need to see me make mistakes so you can learn how to recover. A nice cutback and uh, unlucky. That was probably could have been 50, could have been a goal if I never had precision shooting on. But yes, it's important for you to see um, how I make mistakes and how I recover. Here we're using Neymar. You can see we've got Davies. Now I think the left back of choice is going to be really important. You see with Davies, we had quick step. 
who's going to bring Neymar across over here. Might lose that header. We did. Going to use Davies. Going to run that beat. You got to be passive. See, if I lose the ball there, I'm in big, big trouble. You can see I got no left back here, so I'm just going to run back to cover that position. You see that down the wing? And then switch to Kiko when there's a good chance. Get the ball going forward. And you see that like, here I'm using a lot of L1 triggers. Because there's no long ball and there's direct passing in the final third. When you're building up, sometimes you can find these players are not really making those runs that you want to. So always supplement that with the L1 trigger. Huang in a perfect position. And Neymar then goes for the shot across goal. And we're able to get it in that second half. Get into that second half. And we're just going to defend this kickoff. Right now the wing. You see the most important thing here is that left back. You're going to need that pace. Uh, opponent probably trying to do a bridge like a team for 21. And that is the end of the first half. Okay, we go into the second half. The change we made is we put Alvarez on right centre mid. We put him in striker. And we took Quang off. And then what we did is we also put Rodman. Rod Rodman's playing right centre mid as that attacking player getting forward. Uh, but I just wanted to test Rodman in that position. Just someone else quick. You can see here we've got the ball again. You can see we've got that, the, the three versus two situation. Got the out number. You can see Rodman. There we go. Perfect example of the right centre mid going forward and helping us on the attack. You can see that's why that balance instruction. Or you might see other players you stay forward allows that player to go into position. Again, using our right back, we're doubling up on our opponent with Rodman. And we're using, of course, uh, the, the left back. You see, same thing here. So you can see there's a 2v2 down the wing. I'm just going to pick up that position, move that player inside the box. Bring Neymar in. Not going to change yet. Just going to let Neymar mark that area. Let's in the mid, push the player away and out and get back in position. And you can see, look here, we're doing a lot of L1 triggers and 1-2s here because players are not really making those movements. That is probably the downside if you don't use long ball. I'm going to play a through ball. We're going to wait for Neymar to overlap. It's all about timing now. Very good tackle there. I knew my opponent would read that, but I tried doing a lofted through ball to get through. But to be honest, it was a bit of my fault there. I kind of mis-aimed that. I should have probably aimed that a bit better. Made a mistake with our centre mid, but we're still going to run back. That's probably the one thing you've got to be careful with. Because there's no CDMs, you've got to be very, very careful. And I can notice immediately, goalkeeper, I can notice immediately left back, Davies, his work rate is high, um, low. So he's not really tracking back as well as he should, but he works perfect in these examples because he's got a quick step as well. I kind of like just go into an area and I kind of can get that speed boost. He works very, very well. Um, I would say, however, that if you struggle defensively, you can see look, he's because he's, he's got high low. You see, he's not he's not fighting to get back. Have a look at Davies. He's not fighting to get back. You see that? I'm just gonna let AI control him for a second. He's just he's not fighting to get back. So you've got to be careful. I'd probably say even your left centre back. That's a bad. By the way, in case you're wondering, I kind of wanted to do a slight tackle on the other side. That's more of an issue with the game, but it's probably a mistiming for myself there. We're gonna move goalkeeper left to right and go to the bottom right. My opponent skied it. In case you're wondering what I was doing over there, by the way, if I just go back, for example, just a second, probably missed timing, but uh, you could probably get these slide tackles in other games. The issue was I wanted Van Dyke to use his left foot, but the game has used the right foot and therefore has delayed it and making me go across the body with my right foot and almost giving away a foul. Whereas a left foot will have more of a scooping motion and will be able to get the ball. It's a big issue in this F in FIFA and FC. Um, but that should be use of the left back, of a left foot, not the right foot. Um, the game just contextually forces the slide tackle, depending on what foot technically is closer to the ball. And it's got the highest chance of winning it, even though you may necessarily might not want to do that. So you can see that left centre back role is kind of going to be a bit more important than you think. You can see that's the right centre mid, Rodman. Now you could probably play an attacking centre mid here. Bad miss my opponent. You can probably play an attacking. I'm just looking at my opponent who's playing a three back now. When my opponent's playing a three back. This is the easiest way to break through the system, actually, because of that left back. Now, one thing I would say is with this Davies, once he can beat the like, especially against a three back, this formation is going to be insane as well. Um, but yeah, just I would say that center mids as well. The two center mids that we got is Tanali and we have um. We also have Lorente. They're both very good together. What I would say is the more defensive one in the middle, you need someone that's got like a CDM type player. 
someone that's very, very quick that can recover. Because out of possession, if you lose the ball, you could be in trouble. It's same with the left centre back. The left centre back here, you do need a player that's quick. Because let's say Davies has the ball and I lose the ball here. You may need to flick to your left centre back to recover the wing position. Or even to run back into the centre like so. So you just got to be very, very mindful. You got to be quick on that left analogue stick um, to A, move into position. And B, well, I'll say more. I would say more, more, probably a bit more important is player switching. Make sure you play a switch to the right player even earlier. You can see there's that's Rodman, the right centre mid. You can see that's Alvarez. We're just going to push Alvarez in the centre. We're not doing anything to do that. We're just because we're running with Rodman down the wing. And Alvarez going into position. Going to be a timing of the pass. And then here I just tried to do a fake shot. And you can see this is seven players inside the box. Of course, if you're winning in these situations, you can always, always reduce the players inside the box as well. And you can see we've got a free kick and I believe my opponent probably thinks I've taken a mick by dribbling and that is the end of that game. Okay, overall, I think it's a very good formation. I actually really like it. It's very, very attacking, especially if you're predominantly, people like to attack down the bottom side of the screen. So if you like that, it might be good with your left hand side. In fact, it's very similar to my 4-3-2-1. There's just a few minor things that maybe I would change. Um, in regards to my 4-3-2-1, it's just flipped on the other side, literally. Um, I can understand why the, the centre mid is on balance, but I would recommend the centre edge of the box for a cross. Just because I'd rather have, for example, this right centre mid getting inside the box. Um, because you want that central mid player, you want that centre mid to stay back. So if you lose the ball from a counter attack, you're able to run back and control a situation. Problem is with having this player on balance, they can sometimes run inside the box or be attacking when you don't want them to be, especially when the ball is down the wing. So just help this position a bit more deeper. You ideally need a CDM here. I would say CDM in this position. I would say a box to box, centre mid, and Alexia is, I'll say something like Tonali is good here, something like Lorente or Alexia or Goretzka. A box to box would be good would be good as well. If you struggle defensively, put two CDMs here. This play is important to cover for. Davies. Now you can put cover wing to basically cover for Davies when Davies is out of position um, if you really really want but that kind of messes up the setup defensively. Um, this is fine. The rest of the formation is fine. The right centre mid I'll say put an attack in play here like a KDB and Alexia as well. I would actually opt to put a winger in this position because this player is going to be playing on the right hand side as a right mid running up and down or even someone like Lorente can play this role but defensively that's a right mid so make sure you put someone that's quick here. Uh, again someone like Neymar will be good but Maybe someone like Vinicius Jr., someone that's got that pace there and the stamina. Neymar lacks the, the kind of the, the stamina, I suppose you can say. But I really like him because he combines very well with Davies. The most important player is this player. I would recommend getting someone that's high, high work rates that can do that, that can do both. The Kochari, I think her name is. She's a very good option. I think Ferland Mendy is a really good option as well because um, he's five star four. So that would be the option that I would put on the left hand side. And I think that works very well. The left centre back, make sure it's someone that's quick. I would say probably put the far, if you have two centre backs, one's 89 pace, one's 84 pace, for example. Put the fast one on the left hand side. That way you can recover when Davies out of position. You can use your left centre back to slot in. And then, as I said, CDM here. Maybe a wing or attacking player there. And box to box there. And the two strikers, you can go with any two strikers here. That's completely fine. I'd probably say have someone that's a bit more agile up front. But that is Mark Marley's tactics with my twist. I think the only thing I put in it really here is to the edge of the box for a cross. And maybe sometimes with Neymar come back in offence. I did realise after if you put it on balanced, Neymar will only come back sometimes. But when you put come back in offence on, you'll always force Neymar to come back. Although work rates also take a part in. If you can get someone that's high, high, even better, but probably not a good chance of that as well. Um, on the tactics side, I think it's completely fine. You may want to use long ball if you struggle with L1 triggers, but I think balance is fine. The rest of the tactics, I would not change. I think this is a perfect balance between being attacking, but not being too attacking with 71 width where it's overly attacking and not being passive around 39. I think this is a really, really good balance. You could always reduce the width if you struggle defensively if you find the formation is a bit too wide, but I think this is a good formation together. This is definitely a meta setup, definitely a one for rank one and elite level. Of course, a pro player is using this, um, but this is actually a really good setup. The only thing I would say is again, you just need a the most important position here is you need someone that's fast here. Preferably high, high. You can always sub someone on. Make sure this player is quick enough also to cover for the left back. And same with the left centre mid. 
Someone here that's got good agility and balance and play for the overlap and the cut back down the wing is probably very important. And you can have Alvarez as kind of person joining another side. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Take you. Don't forget if you want to get better at FIFA, you come to my PFA school, so it's forward slash no guides, or you can click over there. Link is down below in the description as well. Thanks for watching. Take it easy, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.